keep it moving, amigos and amigas. I guess you could just say amigos. This is going to be Dr. Longclaw's request. The song is called Last Stardust, and it's another song by M.A. This is one of the first M.A. songs that I ever heard. It's from Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blade Works, so I know that you've heard it as well. Yeah, I definitely have then, because I love Fate. I know that's controversial in some circles, but I do like Fate. But I hope you enjoy the live performance. By the way, the video has subtitles, so no need to pull up lyrics. I appreciate that. I know, Jack. Oh, dude, you changed your name. It's good to see you. But yeah, I'm not, uh, I'm, my monthly schedule is uh, not going to happen after this week. So I'll be back from time to time. But I can't guarantee it's going to be every month. And so I don't, I don't want to pressure anyone to, to do anything. And I, don't, I also want to give all my wonderful, wonderful and supportive patrons everything they've they've requested and so that's what this week is about yeah I, I i know jack it's good to see you man jack guys jack was my first ever friend on twitch and i i'm so glad to see that you're doing so well as well it's really awesome man guys go follow jack i don't think i have a, a shout out thing but i know you changed your there you go Go follow Jack for some really lovely uh, guitar music streams, right? You still doing those? That's freaking awesome. He's an amazing singer too and a great performer and really fun times on his stream. That's, that's what I take away from Jack. All right, friends. Let's get this one going. MA Last Stardust. Live Dawn Concert. Is it actually at Dawn? Because that would be sick. This is a really lovely rendition. I'm thinking, obviously, we just listened to one of her first concerts at the Budokan. And there is so much more, whether it's the mastering or just how the audio is set up from this recording, there is so much more edge in her sound this time around. You know, isn't that one of, that's like such a fantastic way of listening to your favorite singers over different periods of time in different venues and different places, but is to get that, kind of different flavor it's like it's like how you make an espresso right every little piece of the process that goes into making an espresso for your cappuccino or just on its own or whatever every piece of the process adds a different component to the flavor at the end and so if you do something differently and a little piece of the recipe is different the result you're going to get is different and that's the same thing with every singer the venue the song the time in their life what's going on and hearing this edge in her sound it's it's so exciting. It's so exciting. Shut 
sharp in the So a lot has changed. That's a totally different registration for that high note than we heard in any of the Budokan recordings. Not to mention, there were a few moments in that last section that we just listened to where she adds a little bit of grit and oomph, and it sounds very clearly like she's taking a little bit more risk in the vocal production. Going back to that duet we heard earlier, vulnerability really comes across in the music as exciting dynamic choices. And it's hard. It's hard to find vulnerability in your voice. But it's because it's an emotional thing. It's a technical thing. It's a, a willingness to make mistakes on purpose or what feels like mistakes, right? Leaving perfectionism behind for the sake of expression. That is what she's doing here. And it's really, really impactful, especially I'm assuming, I don't know, I don't have the dates in front of me, but I assume this is after the Budokan concert that we heard several recordings to, for, uh, from. And um, the evolution of her singing is just really, really fascinating and really captivating. Not that there was not, that, you know, it was always captivating, but you hear the different choices she's making, the different risks she's taking in her voice. It's really something. <laughs> Registration, that's going right up into the mask, right up in the head, pingy. Just because they're rivals, I think it's fun to make a comparison between her and Lisa. The same kind of willingness to, you know, they both sing for the same kind of genre, the same OST vibe. And those different vocal choices make all the difference in the listener because it, it feels human. It's not this manicured perfect sound. It's this emotional, emotionally elicited sound. And, and one thing that's so cool to me about anime is how the music is so geared towards preparing you to like enjoy this saga, right? This canonic, different animated story that can kind of be any kind of magic you want it to be. And having a singer sing this kind of music, and that's what I love about Fate. Fate is like one of the most ridiculous series. It Sometimes it doesn't make sense. Sometimes it's like so strange and, and you have to read so much into things. But there's always this tie-in thematically that is 
real and, and natural and harmonious, but also like magic and crazy. You know, you have to really do a lot of effort to, to take those things. R- ripping your heart open for true emotional damage. That's the, that's the epitome of expressive performing. But, you know, and being honest, it's like, yeah, why not? <laughs> I know that's silly, but it, it, that kind of thing works. The actual, you know, ripping and tearing that we hear in the voice, that's not unsafe, right? What she's doing, little cracks here, little grit here and there. Everything is still so open. The registration shift, making different sounds in different places because it's effective. Oh, yeah, baby. It was sick. Dr. Longclaw, thank you for that one.